Hi and welcome to the independent practice for lesson 10.2 and we're talking about uh, comparing data, data sets. And the first thing we have here is um, we're going to use uh, uh, this, this box and whisker plot for numbers 8 through 11 and um, uh, this is the distances traveled by two toy cars that were jumped from a ramp, okay, and it's measured in inches. And we have car A and car B, and we have our box and whisker plots for both. So we're asked to compare the minimum, maximum, and medium of the box plots. Uh, well, here is the um, car A. And in car A, we have uh, the minimum is 165, so that's the minimum, 165 right there. The max is 210. The max is 210 for car A. And the median is 180. So that median is that middle line, in, or the line in, it's not always exactly in the middle, but uh, it's the line inside the box, which is 180 here. And then we have car B. Try to color code them too. It's kind of slick. Car B, the minimum is 160, so that's the minimum, 160. And the max is 205, so the maximum value is 205. And the median is 185, that's that, that line inside the box right there. Next, we have number 9. So in number 9, compare the ranges and interquartile ranges of the data in the box plots. So this is what I got going. The uh, let, let's start with car A. So the range in car A is uh, 210 minus 165. So the range is going to be, I'm going to zoom out like that so I can get all of it in there. Just like that. Okay. So uh, car A, you got the range is going to be 210 minus 165. So it's 210 minus 165. When you subtract those, you get 45. And the inner quartile range is the range of the box. So it's the upper quartile right here minus the lower quartile. And that ends up being, uh, what, 195. That's 195 minus 170 right there. And that's value is 25. Now, if I compare that to uh, B, the range is 205 to 160. So that's two, 205 to 160. When you subtract those, I get 45. And notice, they both have the same range. The, this, so the, this is shifted to the right more, but they still have the same range. The, the lower dot, the distance from the lower dot to the upper dot is the same. And the interquartile range for uh, car B is 200 minus 175. 200 minus 175 and that also is 25 so they both have the same interquartile range so the box is the same size and the distance from one whisker to the other whisker is the same but the box you can see the distribution is totally different this one shifted more to the right this one's shifted more to the left and so there's a lot of different um, so the variability is the same but the the distribution of that data is a little different what do the box plots tell you about the distances, uh, uh, jump distances of the two cars? Well, what I would look at here is uh, overall, overall, car A jumped uh, a, a less distance than car B overall, um, but the, the the range is higher. So let's see what I have to say here. Um, I got this. Car B has a greater median. Yes, it most certainly does than car A. And the two cars have the same variability. I was mentioning that before, since the IQR, the interquartile range, is the same for both cars. And what I would add to this, too, is um, overall, like I said, overall, it looks like car B uh, jumped farther. Because here, from here to here, if you think about it, that's 75% of the data right there and only 25 percent was over here anyway number 11 uh, what do the whiskers tell you about the two data sets 
Well, car A has less variability in the lowest quarter of the data. And I started to talk about that. So here, uh, if I have this, let me, uh, so the, I'm going to try yellow. The, this right here, this right here, that's 25% of the data. And this is 25% of the data. Let me zoom in more here. Um, this here, this is 25% of the data. And this is 25% of the data. See, it's, it's, uh, there's less very, oops, oh, don't want to do that. There's less variability here. It's just tighter. The data, the data numbers are closer together here, and the data numbers are more spread out here. So there's more variability here. So that's what's happening in that in that explanation. So when we look at this again, we have uh, car A has less variability in the lowest, right? Because this low lowest 25 percent has more variability. Um, and it's reversed, right? So this has lower variability than this. And then when you reverse it, this right here kind of looks like this. This has less variability than this does. So that's why it says it's the variability is reversed in car B. Um, let's see. Use the box plots to compare the cost of leasing uh, cars in two different cities, city A and city B. Well, overall, I would say... It looks like it's going to be more expensive in city A than in city B, although they do have one data point that's higher than city A. Anyway, in which city would you spend the least amount of money to lease uh, the car? And what's about the greatest? So I would say the least amount would be B, and the more would be A. So it said, I say uh, city B has the lowest price, but also has the highest price. So I would say, uh, yeah, overall, I'm going to spend less in city B, but there is a chance I could spend more, but it, it does end up having the largest range. Anyway, which city has a higher median price? Well, the higher median price is city A, and we can see that right here. This is the median here, and this is the median here. And by how much? Well, I subtracted 475 minus 450, and I get 25, because 475 is the median here, and 450 is the median here. And let's make a conjecture. Which city is it more likely to choose a car at random that leases for less than 450? Uh, well, it looks like city B would probably be a better chance because half of the data is here. Remember, this is 25 and this is another 25% of the data. So together, that's all 50% of the data. That's what the median means. The median is telling us, well, half of the data is here and half the data is here. So this is what I have to say officially. City B, about 50% of the cars. In city B, lease for less than 450 compared to only 25% in uh, for car or, or city A. Okay. Next, yeah, we have. Uh, let's look back. Uh, look back at the box plots for numbers 12 through 14, and I actually have the box plots. Uh, over here to the right. Uh, what did the box plots tell you about the cost of leasing cars in those two cities? Well, uh, I have these box plots here, and I can show you here. So here they are right here, the, the box plots from the previous page. And I'm now going to reveal my response. Uh, city A, so City A has a greater median cost. So yeah, City A has a greater, greater median cost than City B. And it has a greater RQ, IQR cost. So this spread out from the center, the center is right here, the spread out from that is greater. So there's greater variability there. But city B, city B has more predictable costs for 50% of its data values. So it's more predictable right here. And in fact, I would even say right here, all of this stuff is 
more predictable. Right here, it looks like 75% of the data is more predictable. It's all going to be closer to that center number right there. Number 16. I'm going to zoom in and show you this a little bit bigger. So, eh. Uh, two box plots have the same median and equally long whiskers. If one box plot is longer than the other box plot, what does this tell you about the difference between the data sets? So let's think about this. Two box plots have the same median and equally long whiskers. This is what I have to say about it. The box plot with the longer box has more variability in the middle of its 50%, 50% in the middle 50% of the values. So, uh, if if we have an example, for instance, um, I have. I'm going to try to so equally long whiskers. Uh, so there's that, and then I have another, oh, and then I need a median, right? So there's another box, and there's a median here, and then this, oh, I'm going to try to be sneaky right now. I'm going to take this here and move it, so that whisker is the same length. Ugh. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to. <laughs> and then this one right here, that has the same length. Okay, they have the same length. So there's two box plots that have equally long whiskers. And if one box plot has, uh, uh, if, has a longer box, so it says here, if one has a longer box, so this has a longer box than the other. So the whiskers are exactly, I copied them. You watch me copy them. Uh, difference in the data set. So the box plot with the longer box, so the box plot with the longer box here has more variability in the middle of 50%. So it's spread out. The data is more spread out, has more variability than this one. The data numbers are more closely, uh, 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 the, the distance to the, I, I should say the distance to the median for these data uh, numbers are closer than this one. It's more spread out. Anyway, I keep saying the same thing over and over. 17. What can you learn about the data set from a box plot? And how is this information different from a dot plot? Well, this is what I have to say. The box plot allows you uh, box plot box plots allow you to identify the range of the data as well as the quartiles, the median, it gives you a lot of it, detailed information. With this information, you can determine the center and spread of the data. And I might add here a dot plot uh, a dot plot will not give you most of this most of this information. Okay, enough of that. Uh, okay, so <laughs> let, let, let me, you know, you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between the two? Remember that the box plot is, is this, and we've been, that's what this whole lesson's about, is about box plots, okay? Box plot. But the dot plot yeah, why, why isn't this writing right now? A dot plot is where you have a line and you have like two, three, four, five, six, and something like that, and then you have these little X's. And it'll it's real good about telling you maybe the spread of it, the shape, the shape of the data really is what this is about. Um, you have this, you can, you can find out uh, the mode real easy, but it's not good for finding quartiles and medians and 
um, the uh, variability of the data. And so we have one more. Uh, in mathematics, central tendency is the tendency of data values to cluster around some central value. What does a measure of variability, variability tell you about the central tendency of a data set? Uh, well, this is what I have to say about that. Uh, the range, the range tells you very little about the central tendency, uh, but the IQR tells you how closely the middle half of the data clusters around the median. <laughs> there you go. That's all you got to know. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.